God bless you, and may the Lord keep you real good. Uh, I am so excited to be back in session with Bible study. Amen. We have had a chance to, um, we really didn't take a break. We had a, a good Holy Week service and then came right back. Uh, now we're back um, uh, for Bible study, and this, uh, I believe, is uh, going to take us back just a little bit to get a little bit of a refresher. But we need uh, always, as Mother Lee echoed, stay in the word, uh, stay in the word. She mentioned to us that we need to continue to pray. And I agree, stay in the word, keep praying because it's working. I think that yeah. is the message of the day. Stay in the word, keep praying because it's working. So, so church, I, it, is, it is about that time for us to dive into Bible study. And prior to us doing so, I need you to do your due diligence and look through uh, the, the role of participants and see that we're missing a couple of people. And I want to see them on Bible study. I need you to text your neighbor. Uh, you can't touch them, but you can text them and let them know <laughs> the Bible study is going on and I need to see them. Tell them pastor asked about you. He wants to know why you're not in Bible study. Amen. Amen. Because listen, church, we can, we'll never be able to defeat the devil if we are lackluster in our knowledge of the Lord. We got to be about God's business by learning his word, and we're able to improve every aspect of our lives by our knowledge of the scriptures. And so when it is that we're under attack, the only way to over or the best way to overcome attack is to continue to stay in the, in the scriptures to keep yourself grounded in the word of God, but also church to keep yourself renewed in your mind. As we all have an adversary, we have an enemy out there that's trying to make life hard for us. But if you're not in your Bible, I guarantee you the devil can wreak havoc in your life. This morning in my devotion, Mother Pertle, when I was working out, one of the things that the Lord reminded me was, I got everything that you need under control, but I need you to always remember you're in a spiritual fight. And I want to pass that word on to this congregation right now, that God has everything under control, but we always got to remember we are in a spiritual fight. We're not necessarily dealing with a physical fight where you can see the person that you're fighting right now. You're in a spiritual fight where we are fighting with a, an unseen enemy, meaning yeah. that church, this unseen enemy that you're fighting against, you might not even be able to notice that, you know, when some folk were looking at cartoons back in the day, the devil had a red tail and horns. You can spot it very easily, right? In this day and time, the thing that's fighting against you is something that's unseen, but you have to always be aware. Right. It's one thing for you to be fighting a devil that's unseen and you're unaware. It's another for you to know that the enemy may be unseen, but he, but you're aware of his tactics. And here, here it is, church. The devil attacks the most in relationships. That the enemy's job is to try to get you to a place where everything you got working is suspended and broken. And so if the devil can get involved in all your stuff, then the next thing you know, you're going to be mad at this. You're going to be firing that. You're going to be fighting this. And you're going to be fighting that. You're going to be arguing with your supervisor. Then you're going to be arguing with the administration. You're going to be arguing with whether or not this should be or whether or not that should be. And before you know it, you all in a tizzy. And, and watch this. And the devil is sitting back tickled. Why, church? Because this is a situation where you when it, when you were dealing with an unseen enemy, but you were unaware that it was the enemy until later on when you realized that all of that mess that was in the atmosphere was for you to use that spiritual power you have to speak to that storm and tell it, peace be still. Amen. How you doing tonight, Mother Pearl? I'm good. I'm good. And I'm glad you said what you said. <laughs> Because uh, I don't think I've ever heard anyone put it better when you say that the devil is not a prophet, he is a historian. Mm -hmm. so Amen. He's, he's Amen. Use your history against you. Yes, he yes, he knows. The, the enemy knows. Do. The enemy knows when you get upset. The enemy knows. Watch this. The enemy knows your triggers. Mm -hmm. See, y'all gonna make me talk to y'all tonight. The enemy knows your triggers. And oh. because the enemy, he, the enemy knows your triggers, he knows how um, to, he knows how to push that button. 
I was looking right. at something the other day, Mother Mother Pertel, on Facebook. There's a very interesting picture that was quite humorous. It was a little boy with a stick on his shoulder. <laughs> and, and all all you saw was the little boy and the stick. And that stick right. sat up on his shoulder. <laughs> and, he, and 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 what's interesting is is that the little boy was was he was insinuating something. And so I sent that same picture uh, over to someone and said to them, if I send you this picture, you already know what's going on, right? And so we use it as a form of humor, but here's the deal. The enemy knows when you have that stick on your shoulder and the, and the enemy, watch this, can use the wind to blow it off and make you go off at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. Here's what I want to tell you, church. Please don't get into nothing that you're going to have to say I'm sorry for when you already know you don't even want to talk to that individual anyway. Amen. <laughs> you, say, say, you, already, you already ain't speaking to them. Now you got to go back and say I'm sorry for doing mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. that you should have done in the first place, right? All mm -hmm. because you had that stick on your shoulder. If you put a stick on your shoulder, you're trying to fight. Right. <laughs> and me knowing the kind of members that I have, it's a lot of sticks on some shoulders in this church. Well, we don't get these Bible study cards, but but I can just imagine some folk got just got a piece of paper. You don't even have a stick, you got a piece of paper. You hoping the wind blows and you can fight, you can fight somebody. But church, here's what I want to tell you. When you're dealing with spiritual warfare, let me take it a step further. When you're dealing with spiritual warfare, Potentially, church, God has something in store for you. You don't want to forfeit what God has in store. Neither do you want to delay what God has in store dealing with, watch this, things that you, you already championed. See, when you get to the next level, let's use it in grade school. You cannot be a senior at this point and then lose or forfeit what God has in store for you or delay it for a kindergarten problem. I thought you were a senior. You can't tell me you've been in church all your life. And every time you get into a situation and an obstacle dealing with the enemy, you're losing the fight all because, watch this, you, you keep wanting to be a kindergartner. No, no. You got you to gotta maintain, watch this, a meat diet. You, you know, milk is milk is good. Milk is necessary. But I do want you to maintain a meat diet. In other words, the Bible says that there comes to a certain time and point in your walk of faith where you're not necessarily a person that's looking for the milk of the word, but you are a person that can sustain and handle the meat of the word of God. And this is the angle, church, that, I'm, that I am encouraging our members to get to this place at this point, that you've got to get to the point that you're operating under the meat of the word of God and you're no longer sacrificing, watch this, your success for temporary gratification. Let me talk to you. Temporary gratification means I feel like fighting, therefore I fight. And after I fight, I feel better. Here's the deal. You blow up the spot and you also blow up some of the friendly casualties that are there. Hear me clearly. Some of the things that you're fighting, watch this, you got other people that's watching and you're affecting your witness with your fight. So don't lose your witness trying to feel better. When in all actuality, feeling better is when you go to God about the thorn in your flesh and quit arguing with the thorn. Uh-oh, I just, I just touched somebody in the wrong place. Again, go to God about your thorn instead of you tickling the thorn. Watch this. The Bible says that when it came down to the thorn in the flesh, Paul said to God, I already came to you about this. And God told him, I'm not going to move it. Can I give you a word tonight? Some of you that are on this call tonight, your word from God is, before we get into Bible study, is that God is not going to change the circumstance. Maybe you need to ask God to give you grace in your circumstance because this circumstance has made you weak. Uh-oh, I'm telling some truth now. This circumstance got you off. This circumstance got you messed up. This circumstance makes you want to quit. This circumstance makes you not even want to come to church. This circumstance makes you want to cuss. Lord have mercy. I not know that I ain't got no cussing members, but I got 
some that their mouth is watering because of the circumstance. And the thing well, is that, watch this, God said to Paul, even though this thorn in your flesh is hitting on your nerves, I'm not going to take it out. Why? Because my strength is made perfect in your weakness. So church, here's what I want to tell you, and we'll go into Bible study after we hear from Mother Bird. What I want to tell you is this. We got to be careful how we're trying to remove the thing that God's not concerned about. Mm. Oh, that's rich to me. If God is not concerned about moving the thorn, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. why are you giving it so much attention? If God said, I'm not going to move it, tell me why you keep trying to pull it out yourself. It's not life-threatening. You understand? The only reason why it's aggravating you because you're giving attention to it. Right. If you stop giving attention to it, it will not bother you. But because you bother it, it bothers you. Here's what I want to tell you. The Bible says that the enemy is waiting on you. The Bible says that he's as a roaring lion. Is he a real lion? No. He makes those sounds and he knows what to do to tickle right. your emotions. And so watch this. If you learn how to stop giving a, a place to the devil, the scripture says, if you, if you resist the devil, he'll flee from you, right? Yes, you that means that we've got to stop giving place to him. I talked to y'all on last week that the issue with, with um, Judas was he was open to the devil. One area mm -hmm. that you're open to the enemy is when you allow your frustrations, watch this one. When we, we become open to the enemy, when we allow our frustrations to be our focus rather than our forward to be our focus. I'm going to stop right there because I can go all day with that. Mother Bird, how you doing tonight? <laughs> I'm doing fine. A little weary, but I'm, I'm good. Don't, don't let it get you. Don't, don't let it get you. <laughs> <laughs> don't let mo Mother Bird, don't let that roaring lion make that. Make that, make that foot homes come out of you. I, I, foul, foul homes. I'm sorry. Foul I, I'm sorry. Don't now let that foul homes come out. <laughs> you got, got to get, got to keep, keep them homes straight. Now you know how. We're <laughs> and so, in so church, in so church, I, I want to say this because openly we need to talk. Openly we need to talk, and, and openly I want to share with with the church that I love. You all have some great goals ahead of you. But whenever you're trying to do something great, don't be surprised that you've got an enemy trying to push against your greatness. Mm -hmm. Use that pushing against as your confirmation. See, I almost closed my Bible and threw it right then. I mean, closed my computer and threw it. Watch this. When David was entering into kingship, he met a Goliath. He had already been confirmed the king, right? The next king of Israel. But then while he was on his way, an episode occurred. And the episode's name was Goliath. The goal of Goliath was to make David think he wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. I'm trying my best to not get on the women's topic. <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? I, I was just but getting here, ready to say it. <laughs> here's what I want to tell you. Here's what I want to tell you. You got to be careful how you have discredited yourself and already yeah. counted yourself out before yeah. you even get to your fight. You, you know how many people have already told themselves, well, I, I guess it ain't going to work out. Well, it'll never work out if you don't show up. Amen. But if you show up, some, God has a way of fighting for you when you show up. And God also has a way of keeping the fight on your mind, even when you try not to show up because you claim it ain't your fight. Mm. But if your forward is, is in, the, in the kitty, if you on deck for forward, you get ready for a fight because church, here's, understand this. When Jesus initiated his ministry, the first person he met was the devil. Mm -hmm. right. After baptism in Matthew chapter 3, he, he goes into the wilderness in Matthew chapter right. 4. And his first encounter 
was the devil himself. Right. So don't be surprised, watch this, that the devil is coming to talk you out of what God has talked you into. Mm, mm. <laughs> mm. Well, I think we can go on the Bible study now. Yeah. Yeah, we doing all right. So we doing so. nice. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be surprised. Oh Didn't, my God. Do, do not be surprised mm -hmm. that you got a devil trying to talk you out of what it took the Lord all this time to talk you into. My yeah. God. You're right. You know how long it took God to get you to comply in the first place. Mm. <laughs> I, I know I ain't by myself. I got I believe I got good company there. Yeah, it took me a minute to kind of tell him yes. Amen. <laughs> you know, Amen. It, it took me a minute to it took me a minute to surrender. And, and mother, they met my triggers just a few minutes ago in the last meeting I was in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and see, and so and those triggers were making me want to go and pull some triggers. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. but, but in the midst of it, watch this, the more the enemy is rising up, the more the Lord's confirmation is posting itself in my life. Yeah. You're talking about imprinted in my heart. Mm. Ask, ask the people that was with us when we started this church. Yeah, It was no problem until we said yes to God. That's it. That's <laughs> it. The moment we said yes to God, yes. all hell broke loose. Broke the loose. Church, Here's the thing you got to understand. When okay. hell breaks loose, it's not always the devil. Mm, right. Listen to me. Right. Listen to me. When you have problems, it's not always the devil. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's progress. And the people that have a problem, problem with progress are people that are comfortable where they are. Right. And, and so oftentimes God has sent you to be the change agent mm -hmm. and you're trying to figure out why these folk don't like you mm. It's because time you get there, you change the temperature upon your arrival. You done made folk hot. You ain't done mm. nothing, but just sign in. Don't, don't. <laughs> you, you, understand? <laughs> you just ask for your packet and where you're supposed to go and do your work. And folk then got wow. mad. Folk, folk, folk are intimidated. Uh oh, there's that word again. Yeah, that's a good Listen one. to what happened with Saul. David was nothing to Saul. Saul tried to put his armor on him to try to help him out. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But the reality was, David was more of a man than Saul, even though David was a boy. Mm. Ooh, you is talking. You is talking. David was a boy. So here's what I want to tell you. A lot of the folk that's intimidated by you are people that's been in a place that God has told them that their time is up. Mm. Oh. And so time you arrived, here you go. You say, here I am. I'm right here. And now folk then got mad. Why? Because they already know the handwriting is on the wall. Mm. 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 Change is not a bad thing, church. Change is inevitable. But 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 as we're a part of the change that takes place, don't get sucked into the complacency of those folks that's fighting change. Because when you fight change, you ain't fighting people. Sometimes fighting change is fighting God. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Sometimes, I'm, I'm going to say that that's so good, I got to say it twice. Uh -huh. Sometimes fighting change is not fighting people. Sometimes fighting change is fighting God. Mm. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. Well, well, Lord, I, I don't want to cause no problems. Well, here's the deal. The moment you obey God, you're going to cause problems. You already caused a problem. <laughs> the moment you say yes to the Lord, you're going to be a problem to folks. The moment you say yes to the Lord and you start doing the Lord's will, you're going to be a problem to your kids. Let me just go on and let me just go on and help somebody tonight. You know how you're going to be a problem to your kids? Because God is telling you to clean your house. Uh. Now your kids don't want to talk to you. Uh. <laughs> you, you understand? <laughs> God is telling you, God is telling you to clean your relationship up. Now your spouse is aggravated because wow. God is telling you, do what you got to do to live holy in your house. My you, Lord. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? When, yeah. when, you, when we begin to start saying yes to God, some things have to change. And anybody that's fighting that change is the devil. Or, mm. oh, okay, I'm sorry. Mm. I ain't going to call your kin folks the devil. I ain't going to call my kin folks the devil. I'll just say it this way. When God orders a change, any resistance 
is not of God. Mm-hmm. That's very that? diplomatic. That's very diplomatic. <laughs> How about that? You know, at first, <laughs> at first, we're just gonna call it the devil, but we're just gonna leave mm-hmm. it right. See, right there. See, now I got some members that are gonna ride with me now. So, so here's here's the part, church. Here's the part. Stop trying to fight change because fighting change is also contrary to your prayer. Mm. Can I come sit by you? Oh, we prayed wow. for change. Mm. Why are you fighting it? Mm. <laughs> you the one mm. prayed for it. You mm. the one prayed, God, work this out. Mm. 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 Okay. He started working it out. Mm. <laughs> now you're mad that he working it out. Oh, mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's you wanted him to do it your way. Mm. Okay, well, what does your way look like? Well, my way Not is easy. Way. <laughs> my way is comfortable. My way doesn't grow me. My way doesn't stretch me. That ain't God. Mm. That, that's not God. That's, if you're not going to grow, there's no God. God, just, watch this. Show me in scripture where God was good with complacency. Mm. Even in the wilderness, they had to walk and they had to go get their food every day. Because the Lord was not trying to get them to use heaven as a drive through mm. I'm going to send the manna. You got to come and get it every day. Mm. Because the, God has to build, watch this, a work ethic amongst his people. If not, the people would lose sight of their responsibility. God's going to provide for us. Yes, he is. But we have to seek after, go after such provisions. We cannot sit there and ask, tell God, uh, snap our fingers and tell God to bring it to us. No, God's going to provide for us. We got to go meet the Lord where provision is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, they didn't got quiet now. I guess I can start the Bible study. I, I guess I can start <laughs> the rest of it. <laughs> Any questions before I move on? Let me let me just see. Let me let me look in this chat box. Y'all y'all look real closely and see if anybody has any questions about how change is affecting their temperature right now. Because I know I got some members that that singing that song, uh, "Change Me, Oh God." And then when He starts changing you, then you like, wait a minute, <laughs> leave. Me. Now we went from change me to leave me alone. <laughs> leave me alone, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> change change me and created a problem you understand what i'm saying okay so it looked like it, it looked like there are no questions uh look like there are no questions this bible study gonna get you though while you uh, thinking, listen you, you, before <laughs> you uh before you go any further i just want to um reiterate something that sister carter put in the chat this okay. has been the best 10 minutes she said this has been the greatest 10 minutes I'm like, man, this man come at the gate tonight swinging at us, <laughs> Jesus, help us. But it has been the best 10. It might be 15 by now. But it's been, the okay, she says 23 now. It's been <laughs> the best 23 minutes, Lord, okay? Beautiful, beautiful, great. Yes. Yes. Okay, well, well, thank you, Mother Carter and Mother Bird. I, I think that... Uh, I, I trust the Lord for being the kind of God that he is, because uh, God knows God knows that sometimes, church, that even though we are even though we are trying our best to get into a formality of learning the scripture, sometimes, church, we just need to talk. Right. And, and, and every now and again, uh, that's just that may be the need for the time. Uh, but this this text is doing some talking, too. Uh huh. Let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So get your Bibles out, church, and let's go to uh, let's go to John chapter number five, I believe, is where we've been hanging out uh, for quite some time now. John chapter five. And um, I believe we uh, have have moved down just a touch. Um, we moved down just a touch and uh, we, we're going to get into this. We're going to get into this lesson talking about hostile salvation, hostile, uh, a salvation that is hostile. So let's take a look at it here. John chapter number five, verses 10 through 17. I know that Sarah's on. Uh, Sister Sarah, if you could 
uh, open the text, please, in the uh, ESV, English Standard Version. So the Jews said to the man who had been healed, it is the Sabbath, and it is not lawful for you to take up your bed. Mm. But he answered them, the man who healed me, that man said to me, take up your bed and walk. They asked him, who is the man who said to you, take up your bed and walk? Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn as there was a crowd in the place. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you are well. Sin no more, that nothing mm. worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had healed him. And this mm. was why the Jews were persecuting Jesus, because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My father was working until now, and I am working. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, then. Well, now that y'all, now that I got your attention, let me ask you a question. When using your knowledge of the Sabbath, does rest mean stopping everything or some things? <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. When using your knowledge of the Sabbath, does rest mean stopping everything or stopping some things? What do y'all think? Mm. I think some things. Okay. It's so easy. Just to, Sometimes it's so easy to just do nothing. Mm -hmm. But I don't think the Lord ever wants us to just do nothing. Okay. Because we at least ought to be praying. And, mm -hmm. and 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 believing we, we should at least be doing those kinds of things oh we got some so, we got some, some attorneys for members we got some attorneys <laughs> for members because they they are they are working it in this chat box i'm telling you that we got some we got some straddle the fence answers well you know it all depends on how you look at it mm -hmm. well is it, is it stopping everything or is it stopping some things <laughs> You know, well, I, I just think of a whole different way. Uh, what'd you say, Mother Bird? Well, I'm just trying to understand because, you know, based on my understanding of the Sabbath, mm -hmm. um, rest doesn't necessarily mean stopping anything. Okay, uh, Th very good. Very good. I know. I know where you're going. Okay. I know. Okay. I, I, I know exactly where you're going. I know exactly where you're going. But but see, Mother Bird, I think I think the thing though is, is that, for many for many people, they're not clear. Okay. They're not clear. This is and this is why this is why, um, this this is important for us to take a look at. Okay. First of all, let's understand it. Uh, Sabbath is uncluttered time and space to distance ourselves from the frenzy of our own activities so we can see what God has been and is doing. If we do not quit work for one day a week, we take ourselves too, far too seriously. If you don't just stop sometimes, you, 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 you're, doing, you're doing too much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you and for all you business owners, I know that some of you business owners are saying, I can't afford to just stop my business can't for one day. Nothing. But but look at Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Chick-fil-A closes right. to, to see what God has done and also to look forward to see what God is doing. And even though they close one day a week, they still outsell those folk that try to sell chicken sandwiches. What does that tell you? That, that you know, we we can we can I don't want to argue for them that their closure of one day is an observance of Sabbath, but it is an example of stopping for a minute to just take a minute, to just take a minute. And as I taught you weeks ago when we discussed this lesson, a lot of us right now think that spring break is a time for us to stop and take a break but what did you accomplish during spring break other than do more stuff 
You took off to be busy. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm not <cleaned> <laughs> You, you, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you know, well, I gotta get my spring cleaning done. Well, well, here's here's the thing that's interesting. Did you rest? Because mm. while, while while you was doing all that spring cleaning, while you was doing all that spring cleaning, did you go back to work tired? Mm -hmm. After praying, God, please give me a break. Wow. Please give me a break. I really need this break. I really need this. You know, and so. Even if you put your kids on punishment, you still had to manage them. I think that one of our members said the kids had to wash the wall. Mother Bird, they used to be the dreaded task of the century. When Every I was a kid, Saturday, Lord, mama Lord have mercy. That was a dreaded task right there. So, so, so watch this. Watch this, church. If, so if you don't stop, you're gonna take, you're gonna go too far. This is why I share with a lot of people in relationship you need a Sabbath. What does that mean, preacher? That means that if you and your spouse don't <laughs> never take the time to get together and just take some time for each other, uncluttered time and space, uncluttered, that means without your kids. That also means without your mom and them. That also means without your friends. When was the last time y'all did something with just y'all? Right. Okay. They, mm. They're telling me to, so they're telling me to move on. <laughs> they're telling me to move on. But you're trying is this to, you're trying to figure out. <laughs> 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 okay, good. Because, because church, here, here's what I want to say to you. If you don't value you all's time together, then how can you rejoice about what the Lord has given? Right. You can you, What you're going to do is you're going to take it too far and you're going to complain about what you got. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see, see they, they got quiet again. I need to move on. No, I, let me let me hang out. Little foot, little foot, little foot. Watch this. It, it it cannot be church that the only time that you and your you and your family get together and call yourselves having some uncluttered time, you have to have an agenda, and it's more work to get folks together than it is to spend time together. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Mm -hmm. do, do you understand do you understand how do you understand how difficult it is to arrange a meeting with your family <laughs> that you're trying to you know you tired before everybody get there mm. right you know why that is because this this is not this is not uncluttered it's the clutter is trying to include people that don't want to be there right okay well, i'll move on <laughs> but but, but you know what? When, you, when, uh -oh, when you're talk, talking there. about relationships, <laughs> a lot of times couples, when they get to that empty nest period mm -hmm. in their lives, come on, come on, preach to me. They end, up, they end up separating and divorcing and having affairs and doing stuff like that because over the period, over the span of years, they they they, they lost. The relationship. Mm -hmm. You know why they did concentrating didn't? on the kids and the this and the that. And now okay. you're in the house all along with a stranger. Mm -hmm. So come on and back. He come has on back. grown. She has grown, mm -hmm. or, or whatever, and, and you don't know each other. She she has she has changed. He has changed. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And the only people that know about the change is your work spouses. Wow. wow. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm gonna go and there. That shouldn't be. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna go there. Well, the reason why that exists is because you don't do nothing but work. Mm -hmm. And if you don't quit work even for one day a week and just go to lunch with your spouse and just have lunch and ask how you doing. Uh -huh. uh oh, we're losing them. They drop it off like flies. <laughs> if you, if, 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 listen, listen. You we cannot thank God for who we have if we don't take time to acknowledge who we have. Right. I'm going to say it again. Stop Stop trying to make me think that you're thanking God for what you have when you have not sat down to acknowledge who you have. How How is it that she can cut her hair and you not know? Right. How is it that he can change his cologne and you don't know nothing about it? Right. You, you understand what I'm saying? It, it's crazy to me that you're with somebody. You Y'all sleep in the same house, and every time you turn around, when something new happens to her, folks
folks that work no faster than you do and you stay there. Right. Uh, uh, uh. You, you know why that is? It's because, church, we have taken ourselves too far and we have not sat back to have a moment to acknowledge what God has done. When you acknowledge what God has done, you have a reflection on what God has given. But when you talk about what God is doing, you have a forecast of what you're believing God for. And so my hope and my aim uh, is already what we're doing right now. We're planning to go and be with our children that's in college. So that's our next phase. So Caleb will be in college next fall. Carrington will be in college next fall. And the, and the goal is, is that possibly I can go, we can go visit Caleb one, one weekend. We can go visit Carrington one weekend. You, you see what I'm saying? But guess what? We, we going together. But we, you, you, you see what I mean? It, it, uh, we got a question on the floor, Mother Pearl, and we only end this, the first slide of the night. Yes, Brother Derek, how you doing? Well, uh, um, trying to uh, get my thoughts together. Um, I understand you know, you know, what, uh, what's been said. Mm -hmm. That has been uh, my thought all along. And then, but I remember uh, sometimes you can get away uh, away from that, you know, you know, spend time, you know, with the family when uh um when you had your happy moment, then somebody will turn your happy moment into a sad moment, then your brain gonna empty. And then mm -hmm. with the law and then with the law open your mind back up and then you begin to see that uh people don't still don't want to see you happy. And they wonder what's going on. Uh, they they wonder what's going on because they're so used to um, what they heard. Mm -hmm. But they heard they don't see they don't see that in you what other people say. And so yeah. and so, what I'm trying to say, the Lord will change your outcome and get people. To see you in another, in another way. Yes. I'm not put exactly how I want to see it, but that's the close I can. Get. Oh no, no, no! I, I, if, if I believe I'm tracking with you, brother. I, and I think that I think that. Uh, see, see, I think that uncluttered time is reflection. Let's can we slow down tonight, church? If I don't go too far, we we gonna be all right. But uncluttered time is reflection. I think that we don't spend. Some people call it meditation. I like reflection because reflection helps me to look backwards. Sometimes, church, you need to take some time and look backwards. Here, here's the songwriter says, my soul sit back and wonder. Guess what wondering is? Mm -hmm. Reflecting. <laughs> <laughs> wondering is reflecting. Said, man, how did we get out of that one? Have you ever sat down? Have, see, see, I think that one of the areas that relationships really don't appreciate is your broke days. You remember them days when, when you didn't have money to go out to dinner, but you you know you made the best of it? it or either yeah. broke days or need I say sick days. When uh, Caleb was yeah. when Karen, well, I'm sorry, when Shanta was pregnant with Caleb, she couldn't go out. She couldn't, uh, she was on bed rest. So she had to stay in bed uh after month six, at the month six. She had to stay in bed until she until uh he had the baby. So we had to modify a lot of things of our lives just to normalize life because she couldn't leave the house. Now, it wasn't because she did anything wrong. It's because what God was doing, right? He, God was bringing forth our son, but yet it, it caused the complication. See, church, when you, when you have uncluttered time, you can navigate through difficulty. The, the, are you getting that? When you have uncluttered time, you, you can navigate through difficulty. The space does not necessarily mean a lot of space. It could just mean it is time taken, right? To navigate through what you're dealing with. Because some of the stuff that we're dealing with is quite complicated. But if we don't take time to sit down and think and reflect how to get through such complication, can I tell you something? Dealing with people is complicated. Yes, 
if you got a job and you got to deal with, with people every day, you got uh -huh. complications. Can I tell you something else? If you have a, a baby mama or a baby daddy, it's complicated. You ain't got to put nothing in the chat. Just know I'm telling the truth tonight. If you got one of them, it's complicated. And guess what? You need the Lord and the heavenly host to know how to navigate through the landmines that you walk through to, to just to communicate who's going to pick the kids up. Mm. <laughs> or just to communicate whether or not you're going to get them for Christmas, even though it's your year and some other folk act like what you're supposed to do, they ain't doing what they're supposed to do. You understand? So when you're dealing with people that's not going to do what they're supposed to do, guess, guess how you're going to beat them or guess how you're going to win? You've got to take some uncluttered time. Uh-oh, I just gave you one. If you learn how to just sit yourself down somewhere, if I had, if I was close to you, I'd swing at you and tell you sit down somewhere. You ever had that happen to you? With your mom would get the flash water and just swat at you. Now it's child abuse. Now we can't can't use the flash water. But you need to understand that that heaven needs to give you a big flash water and tell you sit yourself down, take some uncluttered time, and guess what? Build the greatest thing that God has put in your spirit. But you keep trying to navigate through the landmines of what your last relationship is putting you through. Mm. When in all actuality, what God has been, has been a keeper to keep you sane while you dealt with that foolishness. But now that you're gone, tell me why you keep looking back in the Sodom. If anything, you better, you better run, <laughs> run, <laughs> run. I'm telling you, like Lee Williams say, why the blood is running warm in your veins. Amen, somebody. Let me let me move on then, since y'all don't want to talk no more to me. Then I'll tell you this. A, a world, listen, listen to Henry Ward Beecher. He said, the world without a Sabbath would be like a man without a smile, like summer without flowers, and like a homestead without a garden. It is the most joyous day of the week when yeah. you learn how to just take a moment and just and just exhale. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. rob yourself. We rob ourselves when we don't take a moment to just exhale. Okay, so watch this. In order to do some something called Sabbath keeping, that is quieting the internal noise. I can stop right there since there's a comma. And, and, and deal with these English majors that's on this call tonight. How many of you know how to quiet your internal noise? Uh-oh. It, it, it. See, see, the reason why you can't hear the still small voice of your Lord is because your, your internal noise is too loud. What? No, no. Mm-hmm. You, you know, you you don't want to see see. I'm gonna take let me let me tell you what, what what happened to this smart church we have. This smart church we have, Mother Bird, don't want to say we have internal noise because internal noise could mean we hearing voices. <laughs> <laughs> so this smart church that we have, they ain't gonna, I ain't gonna admit to that preacher that he ain't telling me that I'm hearing voices. The thing about it is, is that all of us got something that is creating a noise. And it's and that noise is creating a disturbance. And because of such disturbance, you can't hear the small, still voice of the Lord. Because when God is speaking to you, church, let me let me tell you something. When God is speaking to you, you can't even have the TV on. Right. Sometimes people say, Well, I need the noise in the room. But watch this. That noise sometimes can steal or rob you from something, a nugget that you really need. Right. You have to quiet that external noise first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yep. yep. And, and so, so look at this. You have to remove the distractions of pride. That's, that's an internal noise. Pride. Mm -hmm. So you can discern the presence of Christ. Mm. Oh, that's good. That's yes, that, oh, that's good. That's good. That's good stuff right there. See, church, we got to remove the distractions of pride. Uh, uh, uh. Mm -hmm. you, let me give you, let me give you one more. You got to remove the distraction of I got this. Mm -hmm. Not in the sense to say that God does not want you to have a healthy confidence or self-esteem, 
But the thing is, is that you've got so much confidence that you don't, you're not even looking for God. You got too much dip on your chip. See, this is a good place to touch your name. You understand? When you get to the point that you've got it and you don't need God, that's when you're gonna make the biggest mistake of your life. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. We'll keep going. <laughs> we'll keep going. We, we'll keep going. Watch this. Okay, so so in order to get some good, some good, um, some good nuggets about this, then you need to have some Sabbath questions. Let me give you some. Okay. So when you keep the Sabbath, consider the questions to the uh consider the answers to the following questions. So Mother Bird, I'm going to ask you, when, when you work, uh, are you working for God? Yeah. That's, a quest, that's a Sabbath question. That's a Sabbath question. When I'm working, am I working for God? Yes, that's a good question. Okay, watch this. When I rest, am I resting for God, Mother Pertle? Uh -uh. <laughs> I'm going to define working with or working for, or resting for, okay? Watch this. <laughs> Does resting refresh me for work? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good Sabbath right there. When yeah. resting is refreshing you for work. Mm -hmm. And how does my time of rest include devotion to God? Mm-hmm. Mm because a lot of us want to just go get the fishing pole and sit on the water. But while you get, while you, <laughs> while you out there on the water, where's the Lord? Now you don't want him to trouble the water while you. <laughs> 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 or you're gonna be in some trouble while you're on that water, right? So, so we have to, we have to be mindful. We have to be mindful, church, that that when we talk about a time of rest. If, if we don't include devotion to God, then I question whether or not it's Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let, let me, let, let, can we go deeper? Great, I knew you wanted to. So in Sabbath keeping, look at this. Um, uh, Jesus said the Sabbath was made for humankind, not humankind for the Sabbath. Right. Mark 2 and 27. So okay. Jesus did not release us from keeping the Sabbath. Here's what he did. He challenged us, right? He challenged us to keep the Sabbath the right way by setting down our work, consciously taking time for rest and understanding that God has a place in our work and God also has a place in our rest. And that is what makes it holy. When God has a place in your rest. So God having a place in your rest looks like church, you having a devotion set aside while you're resting. You know, and it doesn't necessarily have to be church that you've got to read the whole chapter while you're resting. For me, sometimes it's one word. It's one word in the passage. Or or it's or it is it is an equation in my life and I'm stuck and I need God to give me release. And so I'm going to meditate in that area where I'm stuck so I can get clarity. I'm sitting down so he can download into me the answer to this equation. Sometimes your equation is so complicated that you're trying to do regular math with an algebraic or a calculus type equation. And you're trying to do arithmetic. It's just not, you know, it's going to work only so far. Are you understanding what I'm saying? This is why Jesus said on one occasion to the disciples that you're wondering why your, your magic or your mojo ain't flowing is because this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Church, in order for us to be more effective, we're going to have to be about our spiritual disciplines. That means that fasting is not always you sitting down and turning the plate down. Fasting sometimes is being off Facebook. Fasting sometimes is turning the TV off. Fasting sometimes is getting off the phone. Fasting sometimes is putting your iPhone down and stop playing games all day. Jesus Christ. Fasting is sometimes you not being on TikTok, trying to create videos or looking at somebody else's video. Amen, somebody. Amen. The reality of the matter is, is that what's this? We got to learn how to resist what's going on in the world on the outside so we can quiet that world that's going on on the inside. Many of us are troubled with many things. 
many things. And mm -hmm. because we're troubled about these many things, that work, that that inside that inside thing that's going on, that inside sound is noisy. But until you put down all this stuff, you, 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 we got to put it down, church. We got to put it down. So, so watch this. How well do I understand the fact that one person's work is another person's rest? Here's, here's, here's the thing. Some people might find it uh, tedious, right, to, to be doing some work. You know, they, some folks might be might think that working in the rose garden is tedious work. It, it is for for a person that's a landscape person, <laughs> but for some, but for some people that love gardening, getting out there in the garden is your rest. I can can I give you one? My 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 Sabbath is cooking, <laughs> but I just I'll just get in the kitchen and and. <laughs> And as my kids say, make some greens. Yep. <laughs> gonna, get in there, gonna get in there and do it. And watch this. I'm going to make them. And after I make them, I'm going to taste them. And I'm going to be tasting and eating and making them all, all day. But, it, but here's the deal. I can get out there on the grill and barbecue. That's, 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 that's resting for me. Even though for some people, cooking just, just takes them there. For me, mm -mm, it does me well. And I cook a lot. Now, it's not First Lady Sabbath because me cooking means that it's going to be some dishes <laughs> and it's going to be a lot of food. She ain't going to be happy about that because I don't eat leftovers. Mm. <laughs> ain't, ain't that a mess, Mother Bird? I'm going to cook up That's all that stuff. <laughs> That's a mess. <laughs> I'm going to cook up a whole pot of greens and then say, I don't want no leftovers. We got this. <laughs> <laughs> Pray for First Lady. She's going to be all right. So, so, so here, but see, I got Mother Lee now. And so now that Mother Lee eats my greens, that we're really doing good. But, but the reality of the matter is, is that church oftentimes, what, what may be work for somebody else, see there. Uh. <laughs> see, she's talking about throwing my greens in the garbage. She's about to upset my spirit. She needs a Sabbath. <laughs> she needs to rest those words. <laughs> but, but oftentimes, church, we got to be careful how, uh, for some people, reading. Is, is restful for them, that they can pick up a book or, or something like that and read, you know, some, for some people it's writing or, or doodling, you know, just, just putting some scratches on paper and people think, well, well, you know, that, 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 that bothers me. Well, well don't let it bother you. Leave folks right. alone. <laughs> Find your Sabbath and sit down somewhere. Did I tell y'all that wow. already? <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, let's, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. So, so look at this. When we look at the scriptures, Jesus did something that that was interesting to me by meeting the expectations of the lame man. He broke laws of the, the Jews that were there or the church leaders. The scripture says in verse 16, because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath, the Jews persecuted him. And so the leaders of the church faced a mighty miracle of healing and a broken rule, and they were forced to decide. So what did they decide? They threw away the miracle. They said the miracle has to go, and we're going to focus our attention on the broken rule. Isn't that some? <laughs> Isn't that some? Y'all, you know, that's the argument of God don't hear a sinner's prayer. That's the, that's the one right there, that you're ready to get rid of folk because they're doing things, watch this, the way you didn't expect God to do it, right? And so as, as is common, uh, with those who assume authority that is not rightfully theirs. The Jews were upset about something that they couldn't, they, they ain't running nothing. The leaders felt that their power was threatened when Jesus did it the way he did. And so their goal, their response to that was resentment. And so John continued to follow them and he said, well, all right, then, well, since they feel in this way, guess what they're going to do? They're going to humiliate Jesus. They're going to harass Jesus. And eventually they're going to kill him. Well, Be because this is a conflict over the, the, uh, him doing something on the Sabbath. So all of this fuss was all because he did something on the Sabbath that they felt he shouldn't have done. Okay. Now, now let's get into the meat of this. When, when, 
when we are calling ourselves working with the father, right? Jesus said, my father is at work. My father is always at work to this very day. And I too am working. And so the area that we also can see is that Jesus is also uh, connecting himself to the father in a particular way. And so then by doing so, he ain't subject to the rule because he's, he's, because the father's the one that made the rule, right? But look at this. If God stopped every kind of work on the Sabbath, nature would fall into chaos and right. sin would overrun the world. Mm -hmm. It's almost like I'm going to get in trouble, but I feel like it. I feel good trouble tonight. It's almost like defunding the police. Mm. Who you going to call on. when your car gets stolen? Come on now. <laughs> Who you going to call when, you, when your house on fire? We going to defund the police. When the fire department can't work on, on Sundays because we, you know, we or, or Saturday, whatever day you want to call Sabbath, then that right. means the fire department got Sabbath too, and they can't work. Mm -hmm. Your house on fire, it burns down on the Sabbath day. And, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. the, the thing about it is, church, let's look at this last slide here. Oh, yes. so, so, so the Bible says in Genesis 2 and 2 that God rested on the seventh day. He rested from the work of creation, but began the work of sustaining mm -hmm. creation. See, church, God has been at work and continues to work, and so does his son. If Jesus stopped interceding for you and I, then hell, here we come. Right. He's at work That's every true. day. <laughs> Jesus is at work every day because of my sin, because of your sin, because of my attitude, because of your mm -hmm. attitude. He's working right now because he's still. Working. Why is why is he working? He's working because church. Hear me clearly. He, he's working because this is he's working with the Father. Too many of us today want to see God at work, but in a lot of cases, God is calling us to come to work. Mm. God is creating a thing, and then what, once He creates it, your job is sustaining what God created. Let me give you some application. God created a healthy marriage. What's your job after God created? Sustain it. Mm -hmm. God created the children we have. What's our job? Sustain creation. Sustain those children. Don't just get them to the point tell them they've grown and throw them out there in the world. We are adults and we still lean on the father, which means our children are going to lean on us. Go ahead. It doesn't always mean that you get a chance to rescue him either. Because sometimes leaning on me is me teaching you to lean on Jesus. When you're Amen. not strong, because I'll be your friend. That's right. I'll help you carry on. Y'all ain't with me tonight. I want you to understand that sometimes, church, watch this. We got to learn how to apply a healthy knowledge of the scripture. Because what happens is, is that if you don't allow, if we don't let our children evolve and develop, we're going to create a laziness. Mm-hmm. That's right. And so I don't want to create, I don't want my children to 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 uh think that I gotta do everything for them. I have to put my children in a position for them to do something for themselves. And then I gotta step back and help when they when God sit, prompts me to help and sit down when God tells me to sit down. We got another question, Brother Derek. Unmute yourself, Brother Derek. What you got? Okay. Uh, well, you're on my uh, on my road tonight. Uh, oh, so, well, thank you. I appreciate so, it. So, uh, okay. So, what you're saying is that since God haven't gave up on us, so we shouldn't give up on our children. Well, well, right there. Let me let me unpack that. Let me un unpack that. There's a difference between giving up. And there's a difference between setting limits. Okay. For example, for example, let me give you, let me give you, let me give you a quick one. If if a child does not know how to tie their shoe, it's I do. Come here, Brent. <laughs> then we do. Then you do. That's the model that I learned from the school teacher. Right. The school teacher is going to do it first. Then the school teacher is going to do it with you. 
then the school teacher gonna let you do it on your own. Right. Well, the thing that we have get in trouble with, Brother Derek, with our children, is that once you model what it means to be a responsible man, then you have to talk to your son about responsible manhood. Then you gotta turn him loose to be a responsible man because you cannot stay in the phase of we do. You got to do life yourself. Our children has to do life themselves. So we have to turn them loose to do the life that they do. And, and watch this, when they start doing things and they, and the consequence of what they do, begin to hold them accountable. You know what we gotta do, brother Derek? We, we cannot get in the water and help them out. You, you understand what I'm saying? We can give them a lifeline called prayer. We can pray for them. You, you, you understand? Because there, here's the deal. If we take struggle away from our children, we're going to take away their ability to be able to manage when we're not around. It's just like um, it's just like if, if all you do is feed your kids, feed your kids, feed your kids, then what happens when you die? They, well, they're going to die because they don't know how to feed themselves. So, so, Brother Derek, I'm not telling you to cut your son off. I am telling you to set some limits. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? So, so setting limits means I'm not going to help you, but I'll still talk to you. Yeah, setting, limits, setting limits mean, now I ain't going to give you no money, but, cool. but, but I tell you, I tell you what I am going to give you. I'll give you some game, as Jay-Z said, for nine ninety nine. dollars <laughs> Look, I ain't going to give you no money, but you can come over here and eat. I cook. <laughs> you, you, you see what I'm saying? I cook. You come. I'm, I, I always, you know, there's always a place for fellowship. Because here's here's the thing, brother. What happens? Oftentimes, especially when a person is struggling with letting go of the strings, and this is really kind. Of, sometimes that that our our children have that have that challenge sometimes of letting go of the strings. They they want they want to be independent when it's time for them to make decisions, but then. When it's time for those decisions to begin to catch up with them, then all of a sudden, you know, it's y'all ain't helping me. No, I'm helping you. I'm helping you by helping you to help yourself. Because yeah. part of part of sustaining creation, brother Derek, is it's like it's like having a tree. If if your tree is is limp, you've got to help that branch to get stronger. And organically, if you feed it, nurture it, sustain it. This is sustaining creation. If you nurture it, if you prop that branch up, put it where it's supposed to be and let it sit for a period of time, eventually your sustaining is gonna help it to get stronger. Once it gets stronger, take the crutch away. If not, you're gonna damage the area that's holding it up. Right, right. Well, I agree, uh, uh, I agree with you, uh, I had to, making some hard decisions and you know it, and it don't feel good but you know you know but you're right but um i know he's gonna have to start standing on his own okay and and brother here's the deal um just because he's standing on his own don't mean that you're not with him sometimes see here, here's what i want to tell you here's what i want to tell you when we look at the scriptures and look at the hebrew boys in the fiery furnace at one point, I almost got mad at God. You ever read that story and asked the question, well, were they in the furnace? Why in the world is the Lord now? Now, wait a minute, Lord. Now, you know, you need to come and see about them for me. You understand? And then eventually, the, the, the scripture says that the king saw God with them, right? Yeah. But here's the deal. There's a time when, Brother Derry, your son has to get to know God himself. If not, Brother Derek, what happens is you become your son's God and you in trouble and he in trouble because the scripture says you should have no God, you have should, you should have no other God before me. And this is the thing with, with parenting. As parents, we got to do the best we can to set healthy boundaries with our children. We got to do the best we can. Now, some, some children are easy to set boundaries. Others, we got to do a little bit more work. Because watch this, it may not be the kid, sometimes it's you. Sometimes it's not the kid that 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 um, that's reaching for you, it's you reaching for the kid and then getting mad that they ain't calling you. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're right. Well, I, 
I mean, you <laughs> I mean, you understand? Now you're saying, oh, you acting funny now. You understand? No, no, I'm trying to do what you said. You, you, you see what I'm saying? But but the reality of the matter is, Brother Derek, parenting comes with a manual called the Bible. But I saw the father not come and get his son off the cross. I also saw his son ask the question, Daddy, why didn't you come and get me? Why are you forsaking me? But, but he had a purpose for him. But that love, you know what that love was, though? Although he didn't come and get him off the cross, he never left him. He, he was there. He just couldn't do nothing about it. Or, or let me say it this way. God was there. God chose not to do nothing about it because God had a greater purpose in mind, right? And so the same goes with our children. We have to do what we can for the greater purpose in mind. Okay? We're going to grow our children up, church. We got to do what we have to do for the greater purpose in mind. And sometimes that's where that's a great definition of what we're understanding to be tough love for the greater purpose in mind. Sometimes you got to say no. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna talk about you when they get in the call and they're going to call you all kinds of stuff. <laughs> but that's OK. Right. Because uh, sometimes tough love is what is what's necessary. Sometimes no is the best answer you can give. Mm -hmm. Working with the father. Because sometimes, parents, when you say no to your children, you're working with the father. Oh, yeah. And they're going to do just like the Jews. They're going to harass you. They're going to they gonna want to humiliate you. And they're going to want to kill you because they need that $5 they came and asked you for. They didn't drove all there in the middle of the night to come and get that $5 and you had a nerve to say no. The answer is correct. You, when you decline their cash app request, <laughs> they're going to say something about you. It's going to be okay. Just keep praying. Let the Lord be your God. Let me get to the next one. Watch this now. So then with this claim of Jesus being one that's equal with God, the issue at hand is this. Jesus was teaching that when the opportunity to do good presents itself, it should not be ignored even on the Sabbath day. That's the crux of the matter right there. When the opportunity, so, so what is working with God? Fulfilling the opportunity to do good. Very simple, quite profound. That's 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 as that's as easy as it is. That's how I work with God, doing the, looking for an opportunity to do good and making the best of that opportunity. Right. So as we get ready to go, uh, we got a couple minutes, Mother Bird, and Mother Pertle. I want you to, if you could, um, we had a, the the greater question that's on the table is how do we work with God and I and I imagine manage our children. <laughs> so uh -huh. so I need some mother wit before we <laughs> before we go and I'll come back with our with our announcements and reports and we'll go further into the lesson. But but don't go nowhere church. Let's hear from Mother Bird, Mother Pertle. Mother Mother, mother Pertle, uh I guess I guess you're on what, what do you what do you say? How do you how do we how do we help our kids and work with God at the same time? You know, I guess we have to be like the eagle, and uh, <laughs> even to kick them out. <laughs> and, and, at least <laughs> stir. <laughs> stir the nest. <laughs> at least stir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and if, we, if we aren't like the cuckoo, you know, the cuckoo. <laughs> you know about what a cuckoo <laughs> bird does. The cuckoo lays its egg in somebody else's nest, mm. and when and 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 it expects somebody else. It expects another bird to hatch it. Wow. And when that big old cuckoo egg hatches, that little cuckoo bird is a devious little thing. He has a little arch in his back and he pushes that other egg out of the nest. Mm. And, mm. And, and it may, and it requires, and, and the, uh, the, the birds, they don't even have sense enough to know that they raising somebody else's chick. That's mm. crazy. And they out there working, 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 working themselves to feed this big old chick as big as they are. Mm. And that little mm. baby's down there on the ground somewhere. <laughs> so sometimes you have to stir your nest. Mm. I mean, mm. not that you don't love them, but mm. you know, sometimes that nest needs to be stirred up. And so you're you're, you're saying stirring the nest. Eggshells and stuff out of it. Mm. So you're saying stirring the nest is working with God sometimes. Mm-hmm. I can ride with that. I can ride with that. Mother Bird. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, on situations like this, I used to try to, I, I, I just kind of pass 
on <laughs> on saying anything. Because y'all know I'm not the uh I'm not the most I'm not the easiest person. I'm not the most patient person. So I don't even understand some of the parent children mm -hmm. dynamics that I see in the world. Mm -hmm. Even among my friends and stuff. I don't I don't always understand it. So mm -hmm. But stirring the nest sound good to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, my mama didn't have no issues opening the door. Mm -hmm. And I was like not even 18 when she said, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> and, and that was, you know, that was how they go. Because, you know, she said our, our grown folk need to have their own. They need to have their own and, spot, yeah. And she class classified grown as when you don't want to follow my rules, it didn't even matter about age. I mm -hmm. guess I could have been 12. It did mm -hmm. not matter about that. If she has some rules and it's too much for them to bear, they get to a point where they want to make their own rules, but it's but it's her house. Okay, mm -hmm. then you know you have to you have to go get your own. And yeah. so yeah. that's that's just how you know I guess I feel about that thing to a certain extent. I'm not saying don't help your children. But mm -hmm. I mean, well, in this in this day and time, <laughs> right? Well, and that's and that's and that's it right there, mother. In this day and time, we have to define help. Yes, because that's helping true. helping one child by, for example, getting one responsible child a car so they can do responsible things that's helping. For others, helping them to get their stuff and get to the door is helping. It's helping. You understand? So, so um, I think there's, I think the diversity, this answer is so diverse, we could spend eternity trying to give you answers, yeah. church. What I will say to you is, this is what, this is a good reason or a great example of how you can use Sabbath. Mm. If you're having children trouble, get that, un get that clutter out of your life, sit still, cut, cut the TV off, cut your phone off and spend some time with the Lord to give you some individual answers to your unique situation. Man, that's the boy that took us back, didn't it? Oh, I'm telling you, that was a blessing to me. When the battle is over, uh, we will shout and we're going home. Uh, church, before we uh, close in prayer tonight, I would uh, reiterate the announcement. And I am so excited that we are headed towards our um saturday church school we're going to virtual bible study uh we're already doing virtual bible study and sunday school is going to be on saturday so traditional sunday school is going to be on saturday it, it starts at 1 p.m and it begins this saturday mother bird and uh bishop generette will be our teachers uh for that particular time and we look forward to coming together and learning together, amen. So in order to get on to uh, Sunday school, it is the same channel as you are for Bible study. So this channel that you're on tonight is our teaching channel. We're gonna keep it consistent because there's no sense in learning new stuff. Just log on to this and on Zoom. It's gonna be on Zoom. Log in and be prepared to hear a word uh, taught by uh, Bishop Generette and Mother Lee Saturday church school. And so our Sunday school opportunity is based upon your request. So please let it be more than Mother Bird and Bishop Jennerette in there on Saturday. So church, I, I will say this, because it's virtual, uh, please take some time and sit down somewhere. Don't let it be that you can't pay attention to the lesson because you're in Kroger's and you're trying to ask questions and you're on aisle five. Sit down somewhere and just, it's only an hour. They're not going to be on all day, but they do want your undivided attention. Amen. So if uh, persons are going to sit down and teach you, please respect our teachers and be engaged and be prepared to learn uh, on Saturday. So as we close in prayer, I will say this to you. I'm excited about the direction of our church. I'm excited about the changes that, that God is creating. But even I'm more so excited about you that in the midst of your changes and in the midst of the things that's going on, take a moment of Sabbath to unpack change. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you, Lord, that you have spoken uh, in several different ways tonight, God. You, you opened up 
um, with with just a direct dialogue, one one where we were reflecting back in another and just talking about God, the matters at hand. And Lord, in, in spite of the thing that's going on, help us, God, to be conscious of this matter of spiritual warfare. I pray for the members of grace that we can become more aware that we're in a spiritual fight most of all, that we have a spiritual matter that has to be dealt with and things that are coming to us in the natural have to process through the spirit first. God, I pray that you would help us to really get a thorough understanding of what spiritual warfare is. And briefly, succinctly, God, I pray that we learn how to wait on you. As it was in Daniel, God, that you had an answer and strength that was coming for Daniel. But the, the matter that that what was coming was contended. In, in other words, the enemy resisted what was coming and put up a fight. And Daniel had to wait 21 days. And God assured Daniel while he was praying that on the first day I heard you, but the king of Persia got in the way. God, I'm praying right now for somebody that got something in the way, that they're needing you. They're getting weaker and weaker as the day go by. But Lord, give us the strength to hold on until the answer comes, because I believe, God, when you answer it, it's going to give us strength, and it's also going to give us hope. Father, we also pray for our church school. Saturdays, Saturdays work, God, and as we're preparing to evolve and grow as a people, it's going to require sacrifice for us to grow. And Lord, I pray that we do the necessary things we need to do to be a better people for you. Help us, God, to learn the word because the word is gonna help us to deal with this matter of spiritual warfare. And without us knowing the word, we can't whoop the devil. But since we know the word, God, we're gonna be equipped. And I thank you for the equipment and even the teachers that are opening up the supply house to give us the tools to be able to fight against the enemy. Father, I pray also for our congregation. We have a multitude of prayer requests tonight, God, whether it's children in school, death in families, whether it's God, just the complications of life itself. But Lord, I pray that the church would join pastor in prayer taking a moment of Sabbath every day to unpack what's fighting us so we can get answers and be successful for that day. We don't have to unpack the whole week's worth of problems in one morning. God, if we could just settle ourselves and hear from you for the matter at hand, I believe life will be a lot easier for us. Bless your people, God, as you have so far. Continue to do it in Jesus' name. I pray, that every, I pray that everything you touch, I pray that everything you got going on in your life be touched by the power of God tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and may the Lord keep you. 